What's up, Pro Guides family? I'm Rainox, and today we're going to be going over the top 10 tips to upgrade your rifle game. We'll be starting with some more basic tips and we'll transition into some more advanced things throughout the video. So make sure you're watching till the end. Before we hop into it though, it is of course time for our question of the day. Today's question being, who do you think is the best rifler in the world? I personally am a big fan of Twist's rifling. His crosshair placement is just always so clean and he's just always so damn precise. Uh, but I actually also really love watching Xanteras. But what about you? Make sure to let us know in the comments down below. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. The first and one of the most important things with any rifle and using it successfully is practicing the spray pattern. As many of you know, all automatic weapons in Counter-Strike have a set recoil pattern. That always stays the same no matter how many times you spray the gun. Because of that, since a spray is mostly consistent with only a slight bit of randomness, you can control it and you can do so consistently. Because of that, in order to use rifles optimally, you'll want to be able to control your spray with all of your favorite guns. To practice this, all you have to do is hop into the community map Recoil Master and attempt to spray accurately at a few different ranges. In just a few minutes, you should be able to notice the spray pattern that your gun has and you will start to get an understanding on how to control your spray. When it comes to practicing recoil, there's a lot of levels to it. You have basic recoil control as in body shotting a target with it, but you also have sprays at headshot level and also spray transfers, all of which things that you want to practice. When you want to practice transferring your spray for example, as in continuously spraying accurately just at another target, you can do this best on either aimbots and trying to kill two or maybe even three targets with a single spray. Alternatively, you can practice your spray control as well as your spray transfers just on a wall and trying to get all your bullets grouped together closely. The next tip on this list also actually has to do with spray control, and that's crouch spraying. Crouching, when used at the right moments, can make your spraying endeavors a whole lot easier, while on top of that, making you a bit harder to hit as well. When spraying while standing up, you will have to pull down quite a bit, at least with most rifles. Sometimes, this can be really hard to aim though, but if you crouch just a second after you initiate your spray, you'll only have to really pull down a tiny bit, which means you'll only really have to worry about the horizontal recoil, which is already a whole lot easier to control. On top of that though, you'll also be a bit more difficult to shoot for your opponents. As for your opponents, once they first spot you and once you start shooting at them, you'll be standing. But shortly after, you'll suddenly be crouching, meaning that they'll have to readjust their aim mid-spray, which, as you probably realize, can be quite difficult to do. Basically, crouch spraying will allow you to dodge an extra bullet here and there, while also at the same time improving your spray. On top of that, when you're crouching, your accuracy will even be a bit better, so you might even be able to move while crouching and barely sacrificing any accuracy. The next important thing with the rifles is always having good crosshair placement. Of course, crosshair placement is important with all the guns in the game, particularly the pistols. But with rifles, it's also extremely important. When you have great crosshair placement and your crosshair is already on the opponent's head when you peek them, you'll probably win that duel already. After all, all you have to do is counter strafe and then click your shooty button. Of course, with crosshair placement, it's most important that you both trust your own intuition as to where the opponents might be, and also that you're always aiming at head level. That way, you'll both improve and build on your game sense, and you'll also be able to click heads faster and more effectively. If you've ever felt that someone was so fast to kill you that they must have been cheating or Xanteras himself, you've probably just gotten pre-aimed. Or, you know, it was actually Xanteras or a wall hacker, but the odds are it was probably just someone with really good pre-aim. And that's also what you should assume until he or she starts spinbotting. The next tip on this list is to learn how to use the cheaper rifles as well. A lot of people, and yeah, I'm guilty of it too, completely ignore the cheaper rifles like the FAMAS and Galil. Both of these guns can be very viable, though, as long as you use them properly and know how to use them. In my own games, sometimes I can hear my teammates whiffing their entire FAMAS spray across the map, followed up by him screaming how bad the FAMAS is. Truthfully though, the FAMAS is only partially to blame. Of course, it isn't as good as an M4, but what do you expect if you paid significantly less for it? The main problem with it though is often the person using it. Like the M4s and the AKs, you need to first learn how to use it effectively before you can be perfect with it. It makes sense that you're practicing your M4 more than your FAMAS of course, but you still need to be at least practicing your FAMAS enough that you'll know how to use it effectively. It's honestly a bit horrifying to see how little people know how to spray the patterns of both the FAMAS and the Galil, and I don't want you to be someone like that. 
Make sure you practice using the cheaper rifles too, guys. They're much better than you might think. It's a bit like how the Krieg or the SG-556 were supposedly bad for years until people actually realized it's the meta. And no, I'm not saying that the FAMAS and Galil are secretly meta, because they are simply worse than the AK and M4, but they still might be better than you think. Another important thing to think about during your rifle rounds is what you're up against. Are you playing versus a low buy or an eco? Are you playing against 5 rifles or maybe even 3 ops? Whatever it is you're up against, you should be prepared and adjust accordingly. If you're fighting against 5 USPSs on Mirage for example, the spot you're going to have the biggest advantage on is mid because of the long ranges. But taking your guns to B would be a horrible idea because you'd just get ecoed by some weird USP angles that you and all of your teammates forgot to clear. Alternatively though, if you're up against 3 or even 2 ops going for that B rush we mentioned earlier actually would be effective. And going mid without smokes would essentially be a death wish. Where you should go and where you're the most effective changes depending on what kind of buy you're up against, so make sure you're at least considering the buy of your opponents as well as your own. Something else that's hugely important with the rifles is positioning. A lot of people, especially in the lower ranks, just kind of position wherever or they stick to a single position and don't move from it once throughout the entire game. As you might have guessed from my wording though, that's definitely not the way to go. When it comes to positioning, you want to have at least two things going for you. Firstly, you want to stay unpredictable so that you won't just get pre-aimed or even worse, pre-fired and die instantly. And secondly, this is hugely important, make sure you're taking angles when you at least have some advantage. And then obviously the more advantage you have, the better. As long as you don't play in the exact same angle over and over that is. Something else that a lot of people forget about when they're positioning is utility. When you position yourself somewhere, you should already know what happens when someone flashes, mollies, or smokes you in your position. Standing out completely in the open, although unpredictable, is still usually a bad decision because you might just get flashed and have absolutely no chance of doing anything. Of course, it's really late into the round, so if your enemies don't have any utility left, playing off an angle like this can be an easy way to get at least one kill, but at the start of the round, make sure you're positioning yourself so that you both have an advantage. For example, a piece of cover that favors you, such as barrels on overpasses B site, and also that you have the ability to dodge flashes or to stay alive in case you get flashed. And if you do all of that, you'll both have an advantage when anyone does decide to peek you, and you wouldn't be absolutely rinsed if your opponents decided to throw in a utility. Another thing that a lot of people don't pay enough attention to is their counter strafing. Counter strafing is of course when you stop moving by pressing the opposite movement key from whatever direction you were initially moving. So for example, if you're moving to the left, you can stop moving by letting go of the A key and quickly pressing D instead. A lot of people, and probably you included, know these basics, but even level 10 face it and global elite players don't have it down to perfection just yet, and chances are neither do you. Counter strafing is one of those skills that aren't super flashy but do matter in every engagement that you take. So make sure that you're practicing it at all times. You might not reach perfection immediately, but every little bit closer you get to it, the more fights you'll win and on top of that, you'll be able to learn more advanced movement techniques. Something that a lot of people don't really consider is where to aim when bursting and spraying. A lot of people just always aim at the head, and although by doing this you'll be fine for the most part, people like Coldzera, a pro player currently playing for FaZe Clan, actually advises against this when spraying and bursting. What you should be aiming at instead is the neck. After your first bullet or two, the spray will take your rifle up to head level, so you'll just be hitting headshots. But you'll also be missing less bullets because of them going over the enemy's head, which is actually something that happens quite a lot to people. So basically, when you're spraying or bursting, instead of aiming at the head, aim at the neck instead. You'll still headshot people just as much as you would, but with a less chance of missing your bullets because the spray took them over your opponent's head. The next tip on this list is also one from Coldzera, and that's Jiggle Spray. Basically, something that Coldzera does when he sprays is that he moves slightly from left to right, right to left, and then left to right, basically spamming his movement keys during his spray. Movement and accuracy in Counter-Strike only starts when you have a movement speed higher than 30. Moving while staying below that limit, although very difficult, is definitely possible, and if you do it correctly, you'll both be able to spray accurately and also make your hitbox shake, making you much harder to hit. The thing is though, we just mentioned counter-strafing and how not a lot of people have perfected it. Well, the thing is, you need to have really good counter-strafing in order to effectively pull this off. We suggest that you try it out in aimbots and see if you're able to do it without getting inaccurate. And if you're not able to, no worries, but just make sure you start working on your counter-strafing some more. 
The last and final tip for today is going to be making sure that you move in between your bursts. If you're not much of a sprayer and you prefer bursting, which is actually something you should definitely be doing, especially if you're playing around cover, then it's best that you should stay mobile and move in between your bursts. This makes you significantly harder to hit, but it does require some good counter strafing skills yet again. But you know what to do if you don't quite have those yet. Well guys, that is going to be all for now. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and especially ring that notification bell in order to never miss out on a Pro Guides video again. While you're at it also, don't forget to head on over to ProGuides.com where you will be able to find some top tier guides, one of which was made by Simple, the Navi star himself. If that doesn't sound appealing though, we also have some of the top ranked coaches that will happily, happily help you realize and fix your mistakes and unlock your full potential. With that, I wish you all a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and the best of luck improving.